Yes. Hi, everybody. Reporting live from Vicky and Rabbi Burglass's office to learn a little Torah with you before Pesach. Um, it's been so fun to hear from you after the previous little mini shear that I gave. So I thought we could do it again. So I'm thinking of all of you as I'm teaching and please, please be in touch and use it as a starting point to, you know, communicate and share Torah back with me and just to say hi, we miss you all here and we think about you all the time. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about something that comes up in this week's Parsha actually that relates also to Pesach. Okay, hopefully it'll be about 10 minutes, something like that. So we see in this week's Parsha that there's a, an offering, not an animal offering, but we read in Perak Bet, in Parshat Vayikra, Perak Bet, Pasuk Yudalid. Ve'im takriv minchat bikurim la Hashem, aviv kaloi ba'esh geres karmel takriv et minchat bikurecha. And you might be a little uh, distracted by the word bikurim and think that it's referring to fruits and the Shiva Taminim. But in fact, the example that the Chumash is giving us is Aviv Kalui, um, barley and all sorts of other toasted grains. We're not talking about the first fruits here, but we are talking about the first of something. And that's why we use the word Bikurim. Rashi tells us, Chazal explain, that this Minchat Bikurim is actually the barley and the grains. Um, Aviv means barley. That is actually the first um, grain to ripen in the spring, and that's why we call spring Aviv. Um, and here we're learning about the offering of that first grain of the barley. Now, some of you are thinking of another word for this, I hope, um, and that other word is the Omer, because in Vayikra we actually learn about the mitzvah of Hava'at HaOmer, um, which is, you know, what this Parsha is talking about. Later on in Parsha Emor, in Vayikra Parakaf Gimel, Pasuk Yud, we read that Ki tavo el ha'aretz asher ani noten lachem uktsartem et k'tsira v'havitem et omer reishit k'tsirchem el ha'kohen. When you get to the land, when you arrive in Eretz Yisrael, the land that I am giving you, we'll get back to that later, and you harvest from its harvest, from the land's produce, v'havitem, you have to bring an omer of reishit k'tsirchem an omer of the first of the harvest. Okay, what does that mean, an omer? So again, your brain is probably thinking sfirata omer. Um, and we'll get back to that in a minute. But the word omer literally is the word for a certain measurement. We would say a pound, an ounce. The Torah is using the measurement omer. Um, it's an amount of barley that was brought as an offering to Hashem at the beginning of the season before we enjoy the grain. As we know, we have to say thank you and we have to bring an offering. So the Hava'at HaOmer is actually just like saying we bring a pound. Um, but really what we're bringing is this barley, is the first thing to ripen, the first grain to ripen in the spring. Okay? And what I wanted to show you is something really cool about the word Omer because it's not used often, that measurement is not used often, but the other place it is used is in Shemot, Perak Tet Zion, Pasuk Tet Zion, where Hashem is commanding Bnei Israel to collect man. And Hashem says to them in Perak Tet Zion, Pasuk Tet Zion, in Shemot, Zadavar Asher Tziva Hashem, Lik Tumi Menu Ish Lefiach Lo, everyone should take what he can eat, what he needs. Remember, we're not allowed to take extra from the man. So everybody needs to take what they need, what they can eat, and the Torah tells us what that will be. The measurement is Omer la Gul Golet, an Omer per head, per person, okay? According to the number of people that live in your tent. Mispar naf shotechem, ish la'asher ba'ahalo. So what we see here is something very interesting. Again, in this week's Parsha, in Vayik, where we're learning about minchat bikurim, but of aviv kaloi, etc., meaning the offering of this first grain, the barley, um, I'm showing you that we talk about that in a different context when it comes to listing all the different chagim. So we have a very important milestone um, right after Pesach, the next day in fact, Tet Zion is when we bring the Omer, this amount of barley. So we learn more about it in Vayikra. Um, and now I just want to show you that parallel, that the language of Omer is used by Man. And my question is why? What's the significance? Why would the word Omer, Dafka, be used for bringing this barley and for the amount that we're allowed to collect in the Midbar of Man? So I once heard a beautiful idea. Um, 
which is that what the Torah is trying to teach us is that we need to connect. We dafka do need to connect the barley that we're bringing and harvesting from our fields with the man um, back in midbar life. And the danger is that when we leave the life of miraculous existence of the Midbar, when we leave that life of the well coming with us and Slav, all these birds being there when we need them, and the man falling daily, when we leave all of that and enter Eretz Yisrael and go farming and harvesting, we're going to actually forget that Hashem is the one who provides, right? That's the danger in that life. Do we see God? in everything, um, and maybe we won't. And the Torah is telling us, you bring an omer of barley, because that will remind you in a way, hopefully that will ring a bell, and remind you of that omer of man that you used to receive in the midbar. And we need to remember that when we're bringing that barley, um, that we're thinking, this is just like the man. It might not be falling from the sky, but it's growing from the ground, and that's just as much Hashem um, as, you know, as we saw in the midbar. It's just a little more what we call nature, um, and what's a little bit more routine. Um, and the truth is, I saw a beautiful point about seeing God in nature and in the little things this week also on that little Aleph. If you open up a Chumash, you see that the Aleph in Vayikra is little. In the Sefer Torah, it's actually written like that on the parchment. Um, and the significance of that little Aleph might be, um, I saw something about wine, wrote barrel wine. He wrote that, think about how Vayikra, the beginning of Vayikra is Hashem, calling out to Moshe right from the Mishkan. And the Mishkan was a way for Hashem to live amongst us. And if we think of Hashem among us, and if we think of a little Aleph, Rabbi Wein tells us it's Vayikra el Moshe. Hashem is calling out. Hashem is calling out from the Mishkan. Hashem is calling out from among us. But little Aleph, that means that sometimes it's in those little small things. Um, and that we have to hear Hashem in those little small things. So harvesting your barley, for example, is one of those little small things that it's lucky. Um, and we're grateful that the rains fell the way they did and that we have the health to harvest. And we come here to God with this Hava'at Ha'omer to say we recognize it's from you. Um, and I just wanted to say one more thing and connect it to something we do in the Haggadah. Um, you might remember that when we read the Haggadah, we actually say a little piece from what a farmer says when he brings Bikurim of the other type, the first fruits. There, there's a special mitzvah not only of Hava'at Bikurim, bringing the first fruits, but also of Mikra Bikurim, of reciting a certain text. And we find the text in Devarim, Parak Kavav. And it says that when you come to the land, again, Kitavo el Aretz, Asher Hashem Alokacha Notein Lecha Nachala Virishtavi Ashaftaba, and you settle it, you will take from the first fruits and you will bring it to Hashem and you'll bring it in a basket, etc., etc. And you will say, we do this little history lesson. And at the end we say, but now it's a miracle. You brought us here. Etc., etc. Next Pasuk, Perakavav Pasuk Tet in Devarim. So we're standing there with fruit and we're doing a history lesson because we need to remember where we've been, how far we've come, and who's the one responsible for that. And bringing the Bikurim in a basket and saying to Hashem, I recognize this is from you, is such a special moment, so special that we took that paragraph, and that's what we read the night of Seder. Do you remember, does that sound familiar to you? That we read Arami Oved Avi, the night of Pesach. That actually is our Sipor Yitziat Mitzrayim in the Haggadah. Instead of going to Shemot and reading the whole story of you know, Yitziat Mitzrayim from the actual story, we come here to Devarim and we take the text of the farmer. We say this little quick synopsis of history from the farmer, and we use that as our Sipor Yitziat Mitzrayim. Perhaps because on the night of Mitzrah, on the night of Pesach, it's kind of the same. We're sitting in a position of wealth. We're sitting leaning back. We're feeling free. We're feeling top of the world. And we need to go back just like the farmer does. And we need to think about where we've come from and how we've gotten here. So um, this idea of Hakarat Hatov that we express through Bikurim, both of grains and of um, fruit and the night of Pesach, how we read the text of the farmer when he brings his first fruits. This whole idea of Hakarat Tov we know is so, so much a, um, the essence really of Judaism and of our relationship with Hashem. Um, 
And the truth is that Sfirat Omer is really counting from that offering. Two, if you look in Vayikra, it's just to Sfartem Lachem from that offering to the next offering, which is wheat, which is the Shtei Lechem, the two loaves of bread that we bring on Shavuot. So we just go from from, you know, korban, offering to offering, not of the animal kind, but just of all the produce that we harvest, um, thanking Hashem and continually trying to find Hashem um, among us and in nature. And I hope that you are all able to do that. I know it was easy here when you were learning Torah and living in Eretz Yisrael and um, in that kind of environment. I guess that was your midbar, that was your miraculous environment for a year or a year and a half. Um, and when you're out of that, it seems harder to find Hashem and you get used to the routine and forget that God is there too. So I am reminding all of you to find Hashem um, and to connect and deepen that relationship and improve your sense of Hakarat HaTov and be able to articulate that Hakarat HaTov. And you should continue to grow even after Madrashat Moriah. I know it's hard. And we are here for you and can uh, help you do that if you reach out. Um, it's been fun to learn with you. Please be in touch. Okay? Chag Sameach. Chag Kasher Happy Pesach.